I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Colfax, and welcome back to CTV's The Show. In this episode, we explore what it takes to be a student worker, the struggles the rainy season brings for baseball, and Sarah will take us around the PVL. Welcome to The Show. Annual Olympic Week is right around the corner, so you know what that means. That's right. LARP signups are all this week. So, if you think you have what it takes to win LARP this year, or just want to have some fun, make sure to sign up. up. There can be up to six people in a guild, and it's $5 per person. On the topic of Olympic Week, last week, every student was emailed a form for our new and free Olympic Week shirts. Yes, that's right, Antania. I did say free. So make sure you fill out that form and secure your shirt. And I wouldn't wait either. Order those shirts before time runs out. Up next, we have a story from our very own co-anchor and Jake Smothers that shows how working teens develop skills and character on the job while also balancing schoolwork. Recently, CTV took a deeper look into students juggling both their education and jobs and learned the importance of that responsibility. I think it was really important to help students kind of navigate and figure out how to you know, complete multiple goals at a time because they are transitioning into adulthood. Many teachers are understanding of the responsibilities of juggling these jobs and often will compromise with students. So I think it's really important to help students figure out that balance, but also teach them their communication skills. Because if they have a need, they need to learn how to communicate that to somebody. I think that's important for them to learn those life skills, uh, balance and communication. The most important things in this industry is personality. You cannot teach personality. I can teach just about anything else. Uh, that is the number one thing. If they've got that, because it, it's, it's a people business. You're dealing with people all day long. Uh, but the other thing that I look at personally is uh, work history too. So if if uh, you've had three jobs in the last four months, then uh, that's, that's, a, that's a red flag. Usually, like in the restaurant world, they'll start off as uh, you know hosts, something like that, uh, bus boys, girls, um, uh, some dishwashers, things like that, because uh, they, uh, generally they don't have any skills because uh, experience matters and that's another reason why you want to try early on to get some experience. When you don't have any experience and you get older, people go, hmm. So, if you're looking for some extra money or wanting to learn some responsibility management skills, then consider picking up a work permit in the office. I'm Altania Miro, co-reporting with Jake Smothers and camera op and editors Max Wolf and Gabriel Piet. I know it sometimes can be hard to juggle both school and work, but it's nice to know that there are teachers and managers willing to accommodate to help you be successful. Couldn't have said it better myself, Altania. Speaking of working students, if any seniors are interested in making upwards of $18 an hour and would like to join the 2020 Census team to help report data about the economy, see Mrs. Rondoni in the office for more details. That sure sounds like a great summer opportunity. Oh, it definitely is. Sarah is on the sports stage now, ready to deliver another Around the PVL and a story about how the weather is impacting our spring Colfax teams. Let's head over there now. Welcome to Around the PVL. While we were away, our Alpine ski team, our snowboard team, and our Nordic team were closing out winter in grand fashion, while some of our spring sports were left to make the best of some nasty weather. Later in the show, we will dive into the exciting finish to the winter and now a behind-the-scenes look at how our softball and baseball teams have dealt with the bad weather and ready for the PVL race. Rain, rain, and more rain. While this extended winter has been beneficial for our region, it has been rather dampening to our baseball and softball teams. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to have any consistency because of the weather. So if we have a scheduled outdoor practice, it somehow ends up in indoor. Well, it's been tough. We've been in the gym the entire season so far. We haven't had a single practice on the field yet. And for Chris Nave and his team, who finished last season with a final record of 19-9 and in an impressive section championship, the patience is starting to reach its breaking point. They showed a lot of poise and a lot of patience, but they are getting, I can tell that we're all getting a little stir crazy. We're all getting, a, it's like being inside when you're a kid when it rains all the time, you can't go out and play. That's kind of how, that's kind of how we feel right now. And, and even though practices are able to be altered, senior varsity player Alex Weir states that it's still not the same. It's kind of hard practicing in a gym all the time. But uh, I think everyone's keeping a good spirit. The coaches have been keeping a good spirit too, and it helps us stay up. The coaches have just made different drills that we can do that we would normally do on the field, and they've adjusted them a little bit that we can do them in the gym. We have uh, mobile mounds. That way we can come into the gym. We can still throw bullpens. We can still pitch. We can do our normal routine. With all the rain and abnormal practices and games, staying mentally in it can be challenging. 
but is essential for a successful season. Mentally, you just gotta you just got to keep going. The coaches help us out. The coaches keep our spirits up. The baseball team has a newly refurbished infield and dugout from the summer of 2017, putting in countless hours of manual labor and money. But due to the massive precipitation, the team is unable to use their like new field. We have a great field that we put a lot of time and effort into. It's a beautiful field that uh, is soaking wet. We can't even get on it because you sink in the mud, you sink in the grass. So. Uh, it's been a frustration, especially when we want to try to clean it up and get ready for the season, and we can't even do that. New head coach Trish Chavez and her softball team are also dealing with the same situation and continue working with what they have. I think mostly the girls have been adjusting well to it. Um, we're doing a lot of wiffles and you know front toss with, with weighted balls, but that's about it. Despite the ongoing struggle of wet weather, both coaches have faith that their teams will be ready to go at game time. I feel like they're motivated to get outside now and they're motivated to get on the field and and so I'm hopeful that this won't affect our season. The term we like to use is improvise, adapt and overcome. Just try to, you know, we can't, we can control what we can control. Expect them to be ready to go. We don't, uh, we're not going to make excuses. We're not going to blame the weather, nothing. We're just going to, we're going to be ready to play. When it comes time to play, we're going to, we're going to get after it. Rain or shine, the baseball and softball teams will be ready for PVL play, no matter what Mother Nature throws at them. For CTV Sports, I'm Sarah Detweiler. Mother Nature has been smiling on us of late, and I am so happy for all my fellow spring sports athletes to get outside and thrive. I'll get you up to speed on spring sports in a moment, but first, an amazing finish to the winter snow sports season, despite, you guessed it, some bad weather. In Nordic skiing, the girls scored four top ten finishes in the state, led by Sierra Hagen and Joe Painter's top ten finish for the boys, highlighted a strong state championship performance for the team. The snowboard team went to Mount Shasta with a young team and high hopes. In the end, they walked off the mountain, state champions. Sophomore Tyler Sudgens combined first place highlighted the boys team, and the sophomore Faith Morris combined fourth place finish highlighted the girls team. Despite great performances by these young guns, it would take performances like Ryan Donovan's sixth place finish in the slalom to bring home the title. The downhill women's team went to state with one goal in mind, win it all, and that is just what they did. Due to bad weather, each skier would get only one run in the slalom and one run in the giant slalom to decide the state championship. That's right, high stakes racing and with all the chips down, the terrific trio of Karina Martel, Lou Palandre, and Faith Cooper delivered. In the slalom, Faith Cooper laid down this run to take first place. Karina Martel battled the conditions to take third place and in the giant slalom, the Falcon skiers went two, three, and four with Lou Palandre leading the way. The girls combined scores in both events brought the state championship back to Colfax High School. Coach Casey McLaughlin said, quote, these girls are the real deal, incredibly skilled and fun to be around. The boys team ex exceeded expectations and landed in fifth place in the state. So in total, a snowboard combined state championship, a women's downhill championship, and when you add it all up, Colfax also took third in the state for the combined ski and snowboard championship. That is making a statement. Congratulations to all our snow sport athletes. Our baseball team faces off against Cross River rival Bear River today at home in their second PVL game. Their first game featured a 17-0 shutout of Foothill. They are off to Lyndhurst on Thursday, and as of now, the weather predictions are partly cloudy with no rain. In track and field, the team is gaining momentum with the girls team making some big noise in back-to-back -back invitations that had over 30 schools in all divisions. The Colfax women landed in second place overall at both events. This is all great news for our team as they prepare for the Colfax Invitational that is coming to Martian Stadium on Friday, April 5th, which happens to be the opening day of Olympic week and a minimum day. So make plans now to get out and see your classmates in action. Thanks for tuning in today, Colfax. Next week, you can look forward to Mainland Marino's piece on the swim team and hopefully continue to good weather for all our teams. I'm Sarah Detweiler, and I'll see you next week. I am looking forward to the Invitational, and I am so impressed with our Alpine teams bringing home two state titles. Thank you, Sarah, for keeping us in the loop. Unfortunately, that's all we have today, Colfax, but enjoy the rest of your advisory block. And stay tuned next week, where CTV takes a behind-the-scenes look at the magical world of Willy Wonka before it opens at the Colfax Performing Arts Center on March 28th. Thanks for watching. I'm Otania Miro. And I'm Max Wolf. Take care, Falcons.